Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a fabulous fails episode. Um, wish I could do this series more, but I can typically only do it in some of these less competitive wars because it's hard to show bases that weren't three starred. Uh, there are exceptions if the base ends up getting three starred. But um, in this series, of course, I'm showing bases, or attacks rather, that were unsuccessful and talking about why they didn't work out too well. Uh, this is one of the things you guys wanted to see based off the survey I uh, gave out a few weeks ago. So I'm basically just going to show a few attacks um, at most town hall levels, talk about why they didn't work out so well, and uh, that's, pre that's pretty much the idea of this series. So we have a good opportunity today, um, taking a look at the war against Amigos. Car Canarios, and uh, because the, um, they're not really a top war clan, their bases aren't, uh, you know, proprietary or anything like that, I go ahead and show um, some of these bases. So let's get right to it. Um, we have, I'm going to go into my, uh, my team's attacks here, that's going to be the easiest way to show it, and we're going to start with uh, a two-star attempt. Um, We'll get to the Town Hall 9s, Town Hall 10s, and stuff later. But first, I want to show a Town Hall 10 two star attempt on a Town Hall 11. And honestly, I kind of had trouble pointing out. I mean, maybe you guys can kind of see for yourself, but this was an interesting plan. I wanted to show this attack regardless because, um, and actually, you can see right there, I had to use the rage and the ability. The point damage comes so fast at Town Hall 11. You have to get that rage down earlier than usual because that maxed out point defense will get your queen uh, lower than you think. Because typically, as a Town Hall 10, you're used to the Town Hall 10 defenses. So you got to be careful there. That's one adjustment I guess should have been made. But um, it was a really interesting plan, and I like uh, watching these um, these dragon attacks for two stars. I think they're really interesting. You can see drops down the next rage. Uh, this is um, the synergy. Uh, just coming through here, drops the king down, and what ends up doing it is he doesn't get the percentage. So just taking a look at this base, I think it's always safe, and even if you're going to get the eagle, to drop your minions in whatever is getting you your percentage, Drop that at the beginning of the attack, and you'll see why it would have helped here. Because the eagle does go down, and typically the eagle is the main concern because it has that unlimited range. So if it's still up after your main push, it can take out your minions or your archers or whatever. But even though the the eagle goes down, you'll see what ends up happening because um, he still um, does lose the minions on the outside. It's the air traps that get them, the air skeletons. They actually go over and take those out to cost him some of the percentage. Um, might not have gotten it anyway, but here come the dragons going at that town hall. A uh, very nice free spell gets both the infernos. Has to deal with the CC troops, but get those t gets those taken out pretty quickly. Um, and the dragons converge on the town hall right there. Town hall goes down. From there, 40%. So would have liked to have a little more percentage. I like the baby dragon. I think that was good placement. Um, maybe could have dropped it at the top there. You can see there's a little bit of area at the top that a few archers might have done. Actually, those mortars look like they might have it covered. But um, maybe a baby dragon up there. I don't know. But you'll see here, um, there's these uh, air skellies. And they're beating through these healers, actually. Then they're going to run over and take out the minions. Now, the minions um, probably still wouldn't have made the difference. You can see he's only at 43%. So he would have needed some other plan. You can see how, much, uh, how many buildings are at the top. And whenever that's the case, you should always kind of have a plan to take out some of those because it's going to be hard to get to 50% without touching this huge deposit of buildings. But um, I think the main thing on that attack is just make sure you get your, your minions or your archers or whatever down at the beginning on a Town Hall 11 two-star attempt. That's going to serve you best, and um, it's true for if the eagle doesn't go down, but also true in circumstances like you guys just saw. Um, so next attack we're going to take a look at is... Uh, we have Mittens uh, on number 6. So this one was um, not the best Town Hall 10 base, but it can be tricky. And um, I think it um, it can be deceiving as far as how you attack it. One thing as we watch Mittens here, he has some pretty good mechanics. A few sneaky things he does here as we fast forward to the start. Drops the queen down and I think a few healers on her. I just like the goblins. Very cheap way to take out that building, but also very important for the funnel. So just these little things are what's important, but they uh, they make a difference. I thought that was really cool how he dropped down the goblins like that. Um, so the mechanics are good. 
Main thing is going to be the wall breakers. Um, you just can't cut it that close with the air defense being there. He has to uh, wall breaker in early, especially with the queen dipping um, down for that storage. You gotta figure the healers are gonna be pretty low. And you can you might have noticed he tried to delay the healers, I think, to make it so they didn't um, slide that close to the base. But you always gotta uh, keep in mind the air defense and uh, kinda go for the worst case scenario. Because when it comes to healers getting a range of air defenses, it seems to be the worst case scenario that always plays out, at least in my experience. So the, uh, the healers will go down for the most part. Um, he still gets okay value actually, because the queen I believe does deal with the CC troops, the defensive queen, um, all that good stuff. But another thing he does on this base, which I don't think is quite appropriate, um, not the best idea, is he does all these different segments of the attack. He has a queen walk first, he has the golem, um, and some bowlers there, he has a giant, some more bowlers up there. It's just coming at this base from all these different angles. And I think on a base that's somewhat compact, like this one is, it's not extremely compact, but it's a little bit compact, has the Teslas, you gotta come at the base with one coherent push. If you spread yourself too thin, you're not gonna get that core taken out because the core has the Teslas. Um, you, you can kinda infer that from the base. The Teslas, the Inferno Towers, the Expos, the Giant Bombs, all that high value stuff's in the core. So by spreading out around the base too much, that core has a good chance of not going down. And if you don't get the core, that's a deal breaker. You're better off going strong at the core when you have such a, um, a stacked middle of the base, going strong and taking that out, and then just kind of being a little less clear on what the uh, what will take out the rest of the base, but you know, have a chance at least to get the rest of the base taken out. The core is not the thing you want to have in question. That should be something you know you're going to get taken out. Um, let's move, uh, move on though. We have... Uh, number 24 uh, taking on uh, number 12 in his second attack. This is Jamie, and i um, going to have to remember this one. I watched quite a few Town Hall 9 attacks. Um, oh, yeah, this one um, going against 9.5, so going to be a little bit tricky. I believe the Teslas are um, upgraded to max, but one thing that I noticed right away, these golems were spread way too wide, in my opinion. Um you want to spread the golems, but only as wide as you need to create the funnel. You can see his golems went really wide. They aggroed the queen. They aggroed a ton of point defense all on that side of the base. So by the time he enters and everything goes inside the, uh, the central compartment there, his golems are pretty much already toast. So he's not going to get a whole lot of tanking value. In addition, his heroes are only 1517. And when that's the case, you don't want to bring three golems typically because the golems are basically just buying time for your heroes and your bowlers to do damage behind them. And when your heroes don't do a whole lot of damage, it's not the best um, investment to bring the golems because you're not getting as much value per that per golemage, if that makes sense. So maybe some Valks or something, some Pekkas, something that does damage on its own to supplement the heroes. So um, as a result, he doesn't get a huge part of the base taken out with his kill squad. Uh, those Teslas are especially deadly at the top there. And the Hogs will make their way through, but they'll peter out towards the end, and he won't quite get the job taken care of. So nice try to Jamie. Let's go ahead and fast forward to the end here, because the Hogs hit a giant bomb, and or actually two giant bombs, and from there it's pretty much over. So um, solid effort. We have, let's see, two more Town Hall 9s to take a look at. Uh, both with some valuable uh, lessons you guys can learn. Like I said, I hope this series helps. Um, it's something different because pretty much every other series, regardless of what it is, involves successful attacks. I guess the base destruction, some of the live attacks, maybe not as much, but for the most part, the attack strategies, all that good stuff tends to require um, successful attacks. So I want to mix it up a little bit. Let's go on to... Um, 13, Nev on their 13. This was a, people call it different stuff. I call it, uh, I think HPVB. I don't know, something like that. I call it something like that. I can't remember. But it's um, the classic attack with the Queen Walk, the Pekkas, uh, the Valks, the Bowlers, all that usual stuff. Just kind of that overpowering, uh, heavy DPS attack that tries to overpower the base. One thing to note is this isn't, once again, the uh, Town Hall um, 9.5, so it makes it a little bit trickier to overpower, but regardless, that doesn't make a huge impact. The main thing, I think, 
is for this attack, you don't want to have your troops be flanked. And by flanked, if you don't know what that means, it means your troops go into the base and they're being surrounded by defenses. The opposite of being flanked is just having everything right in front of them. So there's nothing on their, on their sides, there's nothing behind them. Everything's just straight ahead of them and they're going through it and taking it out. But when they're flanked, it really makes it so everything kind of gets disordered. The troops go in weird directions. The uh, Nothing's really tanking for each other. The bowlers get targeted too early. Um, just a bad combination. The queen actually gets pulled in by some of those uh, skeletons, which was nice. But right here, everything goes to that core. And from there, they're pretty much surrounded. There's a point defense on most sides. You can see, especially as they get deep into the base here, I think a few giant bombs go off and a few Teslas pop doing even more damage, and they just get picked off one by one from the side. That's the opposite of what you want to have happen when you do this attack. You want to kind of make a runway for your troops, whether you do that with a queen walk or some kind of other type of funneling, and make it so your troops just go from one side to the other, not cutting through the, the middle of the base, because that makes it so they get flanked, they get taken out um, just by virtue of defenses shooting in from the sides. Um, that's this is the opposite of what you want to do. No offense to Nev. Um, good try to that attack. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more. Um, once again on base number 13, that base had six attacks on it. So five defenses. Pretty um, crazy stuff. Like I said, Genesis is still struggling with the nines a little bit. We're getting better. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, oh, attacks. It'll be interesting to see how uh, we do in our next CWLL war, which is going on right now. Uh, last attack though, Marijan, yeah, Marijan, or Marijuan, no, Marijan probably, um, coming at this base with a uh, La Luna attack, I think this is a uh, cold-blooded, or I always forget the terminology, but you guys know what I'm talking about, I'm coming at this base with a few golems, actually this would be a shattered if it has two golems, I believe, um, the wall breakers kind of fail right there, so I think um, he has a good adjustment. I think he drops the king down, which actually helps him get through that wall, because he was pretty much in a in danger mode right here if his troops walked on him. So a smart thing to do pops the king's ability. Now the king will get pretty far out in front, and uh, he'll he'll lose the benefit of the golems. So that's not a good thing. Plus the bowlers walk, so not the best outcome but considering the wall breaker fail he's actually lucky any of his troops went to the base at all so good adjustment there to at least get some value get a few air defenses taken out um he just doesn't get deep into deep enough into the base right here and had he got those next two air defenses this might be a different story um but i think this attack was still salvageable and there was a bigger issue i think i saw which is something you guys can learn from especially as soon as this air defense goes down right here, and it goes down very quickly, right here, if I can pause this, he should have been dropping balloons on like these archer towers. The progress of the lava hounds should dictate where you drop your balloons. It shouldn't be the progress of your balloons, if that makes sense. So right here, he's kind of waiting for his balloons to cut across the base before he drops more on the back side. If your lava hounds are already that far, take advantage of that tanking. Don't wait for your main group of balloons to come over because you can see he has another three balloons he never deployed he should have instead deployed them deployed those as soon as the lava hound came over and started tanking for that air defense um we see attacks all the time where people they don't wait for the balloons to cut across they basically attack the base all at once drop in like lava hounds on different air defenses and just spread the balloons out around a whole side of the base that's definitely an option and i think if he had dropped them more simultaneously or at least got the other ones going earlier it would have been more successful but he waited and he kind of wasted the last 10 seconds of the tanking he got uh, from those lava hounds so um that was an adjustment i would have made there but anyway hope you guys like the video um once again let me know what you think of this series i have a brand new series starting tomorrow already have the video recorded it'll be uploaded sometime in the morning so not long from now so look forward to that and i'm excited to see what you guys think of that but thank you for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye sectron out